Are you guilty? I mean, good fish keepers make mistakes all the time, and then, of course, bad fish keepers make even more mistakes. And I know I'm guilty of a few of them, but how many of these five mistakes have you made? Here we go. A few of these mistakes will apply to you even if you're a veteran fish keeper. And actually, some of them will apply to you even more so if you're a veteran fish keeper. And I just wanna let you know that no one's gonna be pointing their finger and saying bad fish keeper if you've made some of these mistakes. Bad. If you have, it probably just means that you need to be redirected and break some bad habits. I mean, I'd be completely lying if I said that I was innocent and never made any of these mistakes. Stick around to the end of this video because I'll have a special edition gold-plated mistake that I'll bet you almost everybody's familiar with. And it's usually one that's made by veteran fish keepers. And this first one that I'm gonna tell you about is one that you're probably not expecting. Once you get your aquarium up and running and you have it stocked with all the fish you like, then it's easy to just kind of sit back and enjoy it. And maybe just end your fish keeping adventure right there. Because it really does stop being an adventure if you turn your brain off and stop learning at this point. There's so much more to discover. I mean, you can learn about chemistry involved with your tanks or maybe research different types of fish, either the ones you have or maybe fish you're interested in. Learn about gear and equipment, how much filtration a tank needs, different types of fish food. It's really endless. Challenge yourself. Keep learning as much as you can and keep this adventure fresh. One great YouTuber I watch, who's a fantastic one to learn from, is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. He's actually a chemist or a magician or wizard or something, so he really knows the ins and outs of everything involving microorganisms and diseases you might encounter on your fish journey. He's a really smart guy who's able to bring it down to earth so even people like me can understand. But there are lots of different places to learn. You just have to find the one that's right for you. Anything you pick up can eventually help keep your aquariums and fish healthy. So while not continually learning doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad fish keeper, I wouldn't say it really makes you a good one either. You know what I mean? This next mistake is commonly made by new fish keepers and then people who just aren't really in it to win it. By that I mean, the fish keeping hobby hasn't totally overtaken their lives and turned them into a crazy person like me. But veteran fish keepers will sometimes make this mistake too. You will subscribe. Ding, ding. No, 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 uh, subscribing isn't the mistake. I kind of put that in a bad spot, didn't I? This is one of the most important and most often overlooked aspects of fish keeping that'll save your fish from certain death. So it seems funny that so many people skip on it. I mean, come on. I've even had people comment on my videos where I mentioned this, that not everyone can afford to do this. But I'm thinking, how can you afford not to do it? If you're a good fish keeper, you'll want to do everything you can to keep your fish alive and healthy. And if it means waiting to start a tank until you can afford to do it right, then just give yourself a little extra time. Or maybe you already have a tank up and running. Then just save as much as you can over time to do it. I'm referring to redundancy, which is basically the practice of having backups in place and ready in case one of your pieces of equipment fails. This is especially important for life-sustaining equipment that your fish simply can't do without. Although it's also good to have a redundant gallon of ice cream in the freezer. Oh yeah. But for now I'm talking about filters, heaters in most cases, wave makers, etc. If you have one filter, get another. Keep them both running at the same time. That way if the first one spontaneously combusts into a pile of ashes, and that happens sometimes, then you'll have a backup going that'll protect those precious fish of yours until you hook up another backup filter. Same thing with heaters, and get two. Neither of which is powerful enough to cook your fish, and work them together. I don't have two wave makers pointed at the top of my tank to help with oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange, but I have filters breaking up the surface and at least one wave maker. That way I'll never have to worry about my fish suffocating. Well, unless there's a power outage, but that's a matter for another video. Just in case you're one of the few who commented about it costing too much to invest in redundant systems for your tanks, let me ask you something profound. How much is it gonna cost you to replace your fish when they all die because you didn't have backups? Be a nice, good, redundant fish keeper. That's my advice. Now I want you to forgive yourself if you're guilty of this next sin because I'm guilty of it too. And it's usually committed by new fish keepers who don't really know the difference and then veteran fish keepers who just don't have the patience to introduce fish to their tanks the right way. And believe me, I know how difficult it is to be good. When you get your beautiful new fish home, there's just about nothing more exciting than getting them into your tank so you can watch them do their thing. Well, unless it's a $200 Pleco, and then you'll enjoy the time better when you had them in the little bag, because at least then you could see them. The more expensive your Pleco is, the more he's gonna hide. But cheap Plecos, you can see all the time. But anyway, good fish keepers don't just float their fish and then add them to their tanks. They have a separate, usually smaller, bare bones tank that they can quarantine their fish in for 30 days. 
That way, if the new guys have any diseases, you're not going to be spreading them to your lovely, healthy fish in the main tank. You keep this other tank with all the necessary equipment at the same parameters as your main tank. So same pH, hardness, temperature, and then observe them to make sure that they don't break out with some horrible disease. I usually find that it's ick or even worse epistylus, but it can be anything. So here's where even experienced fish keepers can make a huge mistake. And this is where I most recently failed as well. We keep our fish in quarantine and then get impatient, tired of waiting. So we pop them into the main tank a few weeks early. You did what? Well, remember that wizard I told you about, Jason from Primetime Aquatics? Well, he'll advise you to wait the full 30 days because many times the fish are infected but the incubation period is longer than two weeks, so you don't even know that they're sick until the end of week three. Have a quarantine tank set up, and then when you use it, use it for the full 30 days. This is what being a good fish keeper looks like. I found the perfect fish for my tank. He's perfect because he's beautiful. And I don't really know what kind of water he needs, but I'm guessing probably wet, right? And then he's only two inches long, so I'll probably get like 10 of them, and then they can hang out and be friends and school together. And it'll be so beautiful in my 29 gallon tank. If that's you, then I want you to swear by Grabthar's hammer that you'll stop making terrible decisions about your fish. Don't feel bad. Well, okay, actually feel a little bad. I still love you, but you really need to exhibit more responsibility with your fish than that. And those two inch fish I was talking about were Oscars, and they get to be about 12 to 13 inches long. And I know I'm always picking on Oscar fish keepers, but that's just because it's easy. <laughs> You have to do your research before you buy your fish. If you don't, you're making one of the biggest mistakes you can make because you've already failed before you even got your fish home. Every fish has its own needs and requirements. What kinds of foods do they eat? What temperature should their water be? pH? Are they going to feel like a sardine in a tin can because the tank you have is way too small? You might feel that just asking an employee at one of the big box stores will give you all the info you need, but I'm here to tell you that you need to get your info elsewhere unless you're sure that they know what they're talking about. Many of those employees are just kids who think PH means prehistoric, and I'm pretty sure that they're using that term to talk about me behind my back. You'll usually find better info from a local fish store, but not always, so get your information from a few places. Look online at reputable sites and your local fish store. If you find conflicting information, keep digging. Responsible fish keepers don't make the mistake of buying any fish without doing their research first. And that actually goes with anything, right? I mean, who buys anything important without researching it first? Don't raise your hands. Anyone who knows where I stole the line by Grabthar's hammer gets bonus points. Just check with Jason the Gray over at Primetime Aquatics and see what you can get with those. Now don't you just hate it when you're wrong and someone else is right? Or, or even worse, when someone gives you good advice. Oh man, that's the worst. Well, if you have that trait, then it's probably keeping you from being a good fish keeper. And it's probably keeping you from being a good friend too. Again, not judging anyone here, but come on. It's just pride rearing its ugly head. This isn't really a problem with newer fish keepers because most of you realize how little you know. It's when you start to actually know something that it becomes dangerous. And then you start to feel like you know way more than you actually do. And I realize that not everyone who offers advice is going to give you good advice, but make sure you listen to it and analyze it without bias. This is oftentimes how you learn, right? You have an understanding of how something works, and then someone comes along with a different understanding, and it turns out they were right, so we learn and grow. I recently made a video about my Ambuna tank that I just created. The link is in the upper right corner. I did my research, but still, I'm new to Ambuna, and I knew that a lot of you are much more familiar with them than I am. You have experience and knowledge that I just don't have yet. So I asked you to give me some suggestions I might be able to use to make my Ambuna experience a more successful one. And some of you did give me some good info about aggression levels, and I think one or two of you advised to get more rocks, which was good advice. And now I don't just take advice blindly, but in order to be a good fish keeper, I definitely consider it and maybe dig deeper to make sure that I have a good understanding of whatever it is I'm learning about. We all learn from each other, but if you're too proud to listen to anyone else's opinion, then you'll never grow. You'll stagnate, and I think we can all agree that stagnation isn't a sign of good fish keeping. I have a bonus mistake for you coming up, but don't be afraid to leave a comment with which of these mistakes you've made, or maybe you've made a mistake that isn't even on this list. Let us know so we don't feel so alone. This mistake kind of goes along with not continually learning and then not listening to good advice. And some people just have dumb questions, right? They ask dumb questions and you need to beat them down until all the stupid just squirts out of them. If they have a Facebook account and they're just gonna ask dumb questions all the time, then 
They don't deserve to be on there anyway. If this is you, then you're a total not nice person. If you've ever been on the receiving end of this type of behavior, then I feel for you. I really do. You don't deserve a lashing for asking a question, even if it's one somebody thinks you should already know the answer to. And this is the one mistake that I think actually does make you a bad fish keeper. If you're unwilling to share a little kindness with someone who's brave enough to ask a question or share their tank with you, then shame on you, for real. As good fish keepers, we should be helping each other out because first, it's the nice thing to do. And second, we want the hobby to grow. And being mean to someone isn't gonna do either of those things. You might be great at keeping up your aquarium and fish, but even so, you're not a good fish keeper if you belittle someone and try to embarrass them for their lack of knowledge. Now, there may be times when you need to advise someone who is doing something wrong, like keeping a fish in a tank that's too small for it, but you can do it in a nice way. Stern maybe, but nice also. Remember that we're all excited about the same hobby. If someone's posting on social media about their tank, then they're above and beyond the normal level of excitement that most people have for their aquariums. Be kind to them. A little kindness goes a long way, and it also helps you to be a better fish keeper. Being unkind is one of the most important mistakes you can avoid because it affects other fish keepers, not just you and your fish. Now don't feel bad if you've made one, two, or even all six of these mistakes. I mean, it doesn't make you an awful person or a terrible fish keeper if you have. In fact, I make mistakes all the time, but the most important thing, the takeaway from this, is if you make a mistake, then, then learn from it and grow as a fish keeper. And if you're not doing that, then that's the biggest mistake of all. And I'll tell you what, if you're thinking of getting into African cichlids, but you haven't done a lot of research on them, watch this video right here, where I'll spill the beans about just how crazy these fish are and how wonderful they are as well. You've been watching The Cichlid Charmer, and as always, God bless, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.